Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about this model here. This is from GEPRC and this is the Cinego HD. Now I've had a couple of models in in this kind of form factor recently. Uh, check out my reviews and I really really like them particularly like this where it has the DJI compatible system in. This one actually isn't the DJI Air unit this is the Cadix Vista which has a single antenna and no SD card inside so you can't record locally. But it is a little bit cheaper and really importantly it's an awful lot smaller so inside here the way that everything is laid out is really nice now i've had a couple of quads from gep rc and i have been impressed with their quality so i was excited to get this one in and have a play with it and see how it performs because these kind of frames in my humble opinion are a really great choice for trying to get cinematic flying footage from something like the dgi system so in this video, I'll do the usual thing. I'll unbox it, show you how it comes in the box, and then I'll go through the beta flight settings, show you how they've set up all that, because the tune on this is actually very good. And then I'll also show you at the end some flying footage. So while I unbox this, let me go through some of the specs. Now, there are two versions of this available, uh, which seems to be quite common at the moment, uh, 4S and 6S versions. This is the 4S version. The only difference really is that on the 4S version, it's using 3600 kV motors, whereas on the 6S version, it's using 2800 kV motors. Everything else is pretty much the same. Now, it's unusual when you open the bag, it kind of comes in this shrink wrap. So under the quadcopter is a box of bits and also the mount that's included for a GoPro. Now I'm going to have to take off the cellophane that's actually protecting this. Unusual, I've never seen a quadcopter ship like this. Uh, the only problem I found after the fact is that because the prop guards are TPU, uh, i.e. flexible 3D printed filament, uh, they do deform very slightly and I just had to work mine just to make sure that they were clear of the props. But this is a 3K carbon fibre frame. As I said, this one has the Cadix Vista Digital HD system installed. Three inch props with 3D printed TPU guards. Full 3K carbon fibre. And the frame is printed really nicely. There's a QC sticker on the top. Last time I saw one of those on a GEP RC model, it meant that it was uh, actually been tested and flown, or definitely armed before it left the factory. All the stuff at the back is there to support the different options for the receiver. You can get this with Free Sky stuff, TBS Crossfire, or obviously with the way I've got it here, designed to connect up to the DJI FPV controller. Camera at the front, not on the soft mount, but in my flying, I've not had a problem with that at all. We have the Cadix Vista at the back, and you also then have the flight controller. Now you probably spotted one of the little challenges with this. To actually plug it into the computer, you are going to take off the two side guards, prop guards, uh, take these off to uh, to get at them. It's really nice the way they've done it. I do quite like this black and uh, yellow form factor. But as you can see here, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, uh, some of my props are catching just a smidgen, so I just had to uh, just push them back into shape a little bit. I don't know whether that was the cellophane that was rounded, actually compressed them a little bit, but just test that on yours. Inside the bag, we've got a bag of bits. So we have the antenna guides, if we're using something like a free sky receiver, uh, we've got the battery straps, we've got the little kind of foam pads for the bottom, and we've also got the GoPro mount. Again, 3D printed in TPU, so it's flexible, and it would go at the front above where the camera is. Uh, lots of power on this 4S model to easily handle something like a GoPro. 6S is probably better if you want to use a big heavy GoPro out here at the front, but it's even got all of the screws attached, so it's just a case of undoing four screws and that will fit the front. So the next thing I had to do was to get access to both the beta flight stuff and also the Cadix Vista at the back to make sure that it was updated to the latest version and make sure it was activated. I had to take off the sides and there is a little Allen key in the kit. Use that to undo all the bolts that hold the prop guards on this side. Take that off and then you have free and easy access. So the first thing I did was plugged it into the DJI Assistant. It was on the latest and greatest version of the firmware. So well done, GetRC, for getting it shipped in that state. 
And I do like on the Vista the way that the bind button is nice and easy to get to. So you can just push it with your finger. You don't have to go hunting for a pin or something like you do on the full size DJI units. Once that was all bound and set up, let's plug it into Betaflight. Now we can get to the USB port and I'll take you through what this looked like. Now everything's moving. Um, we're going to enable expert mode, but you can see here that the data flash had something in it. This was armed at the factory before it left. It looks like there's enough there for maybe a short takeoff flight. So really impressed with that. I love that. That's the way the ports are laid out. So uh, that's all good. Configuration, D-Shot 600, motor stop isn't turned on. Motors are reversed, which seems to be quite common on this kind of layout. No real wackiness. Um, now the gyro accelerometer and everything is the right way round. S plus receiver, everything that you'd expect set up is kind of set up really. The only thing I might do is turn on uh, receiver lost or RX set, one of the two. So it makes a nice beeping noise in case it comes down in longer grass when I'm flying around. Next thing then is power and battery looks like that. Pretty standard stuff. Fail safe is set to drop, which is what I want it to be. PID tuning looks like this. Uh, the PID tuning on this, I'm flying in profile one, is absolutely lovely. Loads of Expo, <laughs> loads of um, Super 8, um, and it is flying really nicely. You'll see how nicely in a minute when I show you the video. Receiver, obviously mine is bound to the FPV controller from DJI. I Nothing that I really need to do there, just make sure everything's working as you'd expect. Uh, the modes, there was an arming switch set for auxiliary one, angle and horizon for auxiliary two. I moved everything around here and got them to match what it is on the DJI controller. If you're using the DJI controller, you're absolutely going to have to come in here because by default it's going to arm as soon as or try to arm as soon as you plug the battery in so you're definitely going to need to take those props off the side come in here and tweak everything i like it as angle in the default low position with horizon in the middle and rate at the top if i really get into trouble the only other thing i've set up is the beeper so that i can make that nice beepy noise if i manage to fly it into something like a hedge i can find out where it ended up Version of Beta Flight is 4.1.6 from April 25th. Really nice up to date version. Again, well done, GEP RC. And with that all set, it's time to go to the field and actually fly this thing. So here we are flying a little bit of a breeze on this particular day. This footage, of course, is recorded in the goggles rather than on the model itself because this is the Cadix Vista. It doesn't record locally, even though it has a little bit of local storage. Uh, by default, it's not set up to use that at all. Now, I love the way this flies. If you're looking to fly it like you stole it, although with a 6S you're going to have an awful lot more power and you can probably be a lot more aggressive, this is raw footage. I haven't stabilized this. This is just me flying out over the fields on this rather overcast but quite calm day. And hopefully you can see how nicely it's flying. The only thing I'm noticing is it takes a long time for me to not be able to hear this as it's flying around. So be aware of that. As soon as you start the motors, it does make quite a racket. But this is an absolutely serene, beautiful experience. If you're looking for another option for a model that's quite compact like this, that is going to fly as well as this, then this is going to be absolutely up there in my top three. So in summary, what do I think? Well, there's an awful lot to like about this. Uh, GEP RC have again made a really, really nice model, really great components, tuned beautifully, designed for a very specific purpose. This one is really for flying uh, buttery smooth and getting really good footage. The quality of the build and the layout is excellent. If I was building one, I would build it like this. Uh, and that's about probably the best praise I could give a manufacturer because I'm really picky about the stuff that I build. If you watch the builds on the channel, you know that that's the case. I like the fact that the spare props, battery straps and pads are all in there. And the lower profile guards around the props do seem to help with some of those weird tendon, your tendencies that you can get if the guards are too big. 
GoPro mount is in the box, which is nice. I don't think I necessarily am going to use that here because I'm getting about four and a half minutes on a 1300 milliamp hour pack and getting really nice footage like this. Again, this isn't stabilized. This is just raw straight out the goggles. Free Sky, TBS and DJI options. If you don't want to use the DJI system, if you just want a really cracking frame in this layout that you want to use with a Free Sky receiver and stick your GoPro on top and the tune and the way it's set up, uh, it's just gorgeous. I literally have not done anything to make it fly like this. I'm just flying around having a wonderful time. Only a handful of things that I would draw your attention to on this. Um, the prop protector rings are flexible and mine were slightly squished as it was shipped. Uh, so it took me a moment to get those set up. Check that that's the case before you power on for the first time. It is tricky to get the USB port on both the flight controller and inside the Cadix Vista, you're going to have to take the prop guards off. Uh, you can just about get to the bind button with your little finger. You can kind of push it up by the side for binding things like the Cadix Vista to your DJI equipment. Again, it is very noisy. It is just like the other quadcopters in this class. Uh, although it is relatively compact, uh, those three inch props spinning like mad make quite a noise. So you absolutely couldn't use this for stealth. And the last point is it isn't cheap, but then quality like this, in my experience with this stuff, absolutely isn't. You tend to find that you can buy cheaper stuff, but you have to be prepared to put it with a lot of hassle. But if you don't want the hassle, you just want something that's going to fly like this out of the box, then this is definitely worth a look. I'll pop a link below if you're interested in going out and finding more about it. But Get RC again, have done a really good job. So this one gets a very big thumbs up from me. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.